says, they're going to hunt us down, saints. And we're not, I'm sorry, I just, I just can't find no pre-trip rapture uh, uh, in, in the Bible. Everything, every time you read something that you think it's a pre-trip rapture, just put it at the end, because that's when it happens. We're going to go through this, because God is going to have us glorify him in the middle of this trouble. Can you understand that? God's going to glorify himself even if it's in our debts, in our persecution, in our imprisonment, that we should be faithful unto death. This is what Christianity is about, saints. It's not about getting comfortable and rich here. I'm sorry if, if you don't want to, if you don't like to hear this, but we need to hear the truth. All right. So uh, Peter preached, and then uh, he said, yeah, "Believe, be baptized, and receive the Holy Ghost." And he says, "The promise to you and to me, to many that are far off, five thousand got saved." Man, oh man, pra praise the Lord. And so. Saints, do, do you get it? Are, are you getting this? Let's, let's look at uh, Ephesians, um, the book of Ephesians. Why, why don't we turn there right now and see if I can't make this a little more clearer for you. The book of Ephesians. And why don't we read... Why don't we start in verse uh, three, chapter three, verse one? For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, he's in a prison cell in Rome. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, this this secret, this hidden secret. As I wrote afore, a few words: When you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, not made known in other ages unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, right now, today, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, fellow heirs with Israel, not no more to the Jews only, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body, Israel, the nation of Israel, is of the body of Christ. This idea that Israel is uh, some other, something else, and the body of Christ and the church, and these are two different things, it doesn't, it doesn't teach this in the scripture. We are grafted into Israel. That's why we partake of their benefits, and partake of all their spiritual things, and partake of the heavenly blessings and the promises, and the covenants, the blood of the new covenant. The Gentiles should be fellow heirs. Fellow heirs with who? With Israel. And of the same body. And partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Amen? Whereof I was made a minister, Paul says, according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me who am less than the least of all saints. Is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable? That word unsearchable means you can't find it. Untraceable. Hidden. It's untraceable. It's before the foundation of the world. It's before what the prophets wrote. Do you understand, saints? It's before that. Now being revealed. This, this plan God had before the world started. The unsearchable riches. Literally, the, the wealth, the rich wealth of Christ, the unsearchable riches of Christ, to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, a fellowship now together of Jew and Gentile, not no more just to Israel, but now to the nations who will, the people who will believe, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And this is the fellowship. The fellowship of the mystery, of this economy of grace today, of this mystery. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Hid in God, 
who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent, here's the intention, now listen, that unto principalities and powers in heavenly places, the principalities and powers in heavenly places, might be known by the church, you and me, the manifold wisdom of God, the many folds, the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose, which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. So, according to the eternal purpose, what's that eternal purpose? Look at Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verse 4, 1-4. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated, predetermined our destination, more than just pre-planned it, is predetermined it to glory. All right? Having predestined us unto the adoption of children, full-grown sons that inherit everything now, no more children, the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved, in the beloved, in Jesus, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Verse 9, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, this hidden secret, this purpose, before the foundation of the world, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself, the Father purposed this in himself, that in the dispensation, the fullness of times, eternity future, he planned this uh, in eternity past, and for the purpose of being fulfilled in the dispensation of the fullness of times, eternity future, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth even in him. All the elect angels, all God's elect called, whether it be Israel or, uh, or us today, whether it was Israel in the flesh or us today, um, God's going to put it all together and we're going to enjoy him for all eternity and enjoy each other's fellowship, the fellowship of the mystery for all eternity. Praise his holy name, in whom we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him, the Father, who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. That's the eternal purpose of God. That's what's being revealed to us today through the Apostle Paul. That's why the kingdom didn't appear and the moon didn't turn to blood and the sun to darkness and vapor and pillars of smoke. That's when the fifth, the, the sixth seal is opened. You got the four horsemen riding, all hell is breaking loose on the earth. The fifth seal is open and they're crying out, Lord, Lord, how long do we got to wait for you to take vengeance on them that, has, that have murdered us and have killed us? He says, wait a little while. To the rest of your fellow, fellow brother saints, your brothers and sisters in Christ will die like you did. Just wait a little while yet, and it's going to be fulfilled. Because they loved not their lives unto death. They overcame them by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they were faithful unto death. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Wake up, church. Please, wake up. Don't get caught. Yeah, uh, um, with, with no garments on, naked before the Lord. Don't have him come after you like a thief. Right? Because us that are watching and waiting, he's not coming. We know we know when he's coming. If the good man knew what time the, the, the thief would come, he wouldn't have his house robbed. It wouldn't be broken up. The robber would come and rob him, right? Well, we know. We, we've got the instruction. We've got the doctrine here, saints. That's why this preacher of rapture is so dangerous. It's going to overthrow the faith of people when, when it doesn't happen. And they're going to think they're left behind. And now, you know, and now the wrath of God is going to get them and they're finished. Be careful, saints. So, in Ephesians then chapter uh, 2, here, here he puts it together. He says um, that in verses 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourself is the gift of God, not of works that any man should boast. Then in verse 11 he says, 
Remember that you being at time past Gentiles in the flesh, Ephesians 2.11, who were called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. And at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers, it's foreigners, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Where were the nations that were not, that didn't belong to Abraham's family, to the Jewish people? Where were those nations? Where were those people? They were strangers, aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, uh, uh, without hope and without God. Strangers to the promises and the covenants. They had nothing outside of the will of God. Offering up their babies in sacrifice to gods. Practicing perverse, uh, perverse sexual rituals with their many, many gods they had. Their fertility gods. That's what all this is about today, saints. Nothing's new. Nothing is new. All this, all the perversion, the uh, abortion, all this stuff it is, is the strange gods. They don't know the real God. And it's going to get worse and worse. We're heading into a pagan world, savagery, barbarianism. And just look at, I mean, the children are being murdered and murdered and murdered around the world. I would imagine it's in the billions by now, this abortion stuff. And homosexuality and everything is spreading all over the world. Just have any kind of sex you want with whoever you want, with, with anything you want, animals or whatever. Who cares as long as you're in love, right? That's supposed to be love. This is savagery. This is paganism, raw paganism. And this is what happens to us when we don't have the living God in us. That's why the Apostle Paul said, uh, unless God has left us a seed, we'd all be like Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm not any better than anybody in this world, and any and either of you, church, either of you, dear saints, we're not any better. God help us if we should think we're better. We're just better off because we trusted the Lord. We trusted Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. And so we're better off. Otherwise, we'd be like Sodom and Gomorrah, like the rest of the world is going. And that's why they hate us, saints. And that's why I want, I want to teach you this so you know, so you're going to have power now. We need to start fasting and praying. And the churches need to come together and start asking God for the filling, the baptism of the Holy Ghost with power. Right? It's a shame in the church today. Where's the miracles? Once in a while somebody gets healed, the devil's cast out. But where is it? Jesus said you're going to do greater works than these. And we're going to do them, saints. Because when God pours out His Spirit, the, la the former rain at Pentecost and the latter rain now at the end, when He pours it out, there's going to be such a harvest of souls. Man, are we, the gospel's going to be preached throughout this world. And then we're going to be, and they're going to be putting us to death, saints. <laughs> God's plan is a wonderful plan. Um, I got no problem with it. I just pray that uh, when, when my time goes out, if I die... By natural causes, or if I'm hunted down and murdered, whatever, then I just glorify God in whichever way it goes. And I pray that you do the same. And so, he, he says here that we were separated, we were alienated from Israel. In verse 13, Ephesians 2.13, But now in Christ Jesus, you who are sometimes are far off, far away from God, are made now, you're made close by the blood of Christ. You're made close by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who had made both one, the fellowship of the mystery. He made both one, Jew and Gentile, and had broken down the middle wall of partition between us. What was that wall that separated us? It was the laws God gave to Israel that the Gentiles didn't have, the laws of Moses. All right? And he says here that, Having abolished, verse 15, in his flesh the enmity, the hatred, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain, of two, one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile, bring back together, both unto God in one body by the cross, 
That's what the sacrifice of Jesus was about. One body by the cross, having slain the, en the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you that are far off and to them that were nigh. That's why Paul's sitting in prison writing this letter to the Ephesians. He's saying, hey, you're, trust the Lord, you're in now. To all the promises that were given to Israel, you've got them now too. And that includes the new covenant saints. The new covenant is a Jewish covenant. The first covenant was given to Israel. The second, the New Testament, is given to Israel. You and me are grafted in to believing Israel. Romans 11, into the believing tree. The uh, branches were broken off because of unbelief. And we being an, a wild olive tree are grafted in. Amen? And so, he says that, um, verse 19, Now therefore you're no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and with the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Built upon the foundation of the apostles, and prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building fitly framed together, grown unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you're also built together for habitation of God through the Spirit. Now what are we going to do? Are we going to pull that foundation out from beneath our feet like you pull out a rug and say there's no apostles and prophets? Well, that's the foundation, the doctrinal foundation on which everything is built upon, and now this dispensation of grace. Oh, saints, let me, let me see if I can find a scripture that just came to mind. I believe it's in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Let's see if I got that right. I want to show you something here. All righty. Now, Paul here, he says... Let's start in verse 1 and read. 1 Corinthians 4, 1. Let, let so a man account of us as the ministers of Christ and the stewards of the mysteries of God. The stewards, the house managers. Like you manage a house, well, we need to manage the economy of this, this age of grace. The stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of any man's judgment. Yea, I judge not my own self, for I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judged me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsel to the heart, and then shall every man have his praise of God. And these things, brethren, I have, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos, for your sakes, that you might learn not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you should be puffed up, get proud, conceited, puffed up for one against another. For who makes you to differ one from another? Or what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if you did not receive it? Now you are full, now you are rich, you have reigned as kings without us, without these apostles. And I would to God you did reign, that you, that we also might reign with you. For I think, look at verse 9, that God has set forth us apostles last. There's no apostles in the Old Testament, is there? Alright? For I think that God has set forth us, the apostles last, as it was appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. We are honorable, but we are despised. Even to this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted, beat about, and have no certain dwelling place. Homeless. <coughs> And labor, working, hard work, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bet, blessed. Being persecuted, we suffered. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth 
of the world and are the offscoring of all things unto this day. Boy, that's a far cry from uh, some of the apostles and prophets living in luxury today, isn't it? Man, oh man, wake up, saints. Wake up for such are false apostles transforming themselves into the ministers of Christ. And no, no marvel, Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. 2 Corinthians 11. And so, the apostles are set forth as last to be made a spectacle unto the world and to angels. Why? Because this is, this is the time, saints, we're in the last days. God is going to make the, the offices of the apostles and prophets, he's going to make it known. And the churches that will not recognize it, they have no foundation to stand on, for this is the doctrinal foundation. Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone, and it's forever. It doesn't disappear in the dispensation of grace and then come back in the kingdom or something. Just like people think about the gifts of the Spirit. This is here now, today, and the Apostle lays out the, um, the doctrine. Look at um, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 with me. Let's see what we can find here. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Now listen. Paul says, um, verse 5, 1-5, 2 Corinthians 1-5. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounded by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer, or whether we are comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. Whatever they did, it was to help the saints, to give them the true doctrine, to build them up in the faith, to edify them in the face of all the danger. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure. Do you hear that? Our trouble, which came to us in Asia, we were pressed out of measure, Above strength, it was so bad they couldn't take it no more. Above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. They, they wished they were dead. It was so bad. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raised the dead. Saints, when, um, when it starts getting rough, when it's going to start getting real bad, and it might be getting there real soon, and you're going to be pressed so hard, remember the doctrine of the apostles. Remember the foundation he's laying for you here. Don't trust in you, but trust in him that's raised from the dead. We're going to have to remember, we've got to walk by faith, saints, not by sight. We had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raised it the dead. This is the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit working in us what the church needs to fast and pray for to do the work of the ministry. These people did not go out. Um, Paul and Barnabas did not go out on their missionary journeys until they were um, in Acts 13 in the church of uh, uh, over there in Antioch. They prayed and they fasted and the Holy Ghost said unto him, Send out Saul and Barnabas from, for, for my work. And they went out. But they would not go until they were endued, endued from his power from up on high. Today the church is doing all kinds of things. Ministers, pastors, all kind, doing all kinds of things. They don't, they don't want to fast. They don't want to pray to be filled with the Spirit. Some deny the gifts of the Spirit. Some are, are flying and rolling around and uh, acting crazy and say this is the gift of the Spirit. It's confusion. God's not the author of confusion. Saints, we need the foundation restored. That's why we need the apostles and prophets. The foundation has to be restored, saints. It's all screwed up from uh, all these centuries of people just, just falling away from God, coming up with their own ideas. But we still got the word, don't we? We still got the word. Okay? And in verse 10 he says, Who delivered us 
from so great a death and does deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Praise God. We've got a great God, a holy God. Saints, we need, the church needs to wake up now. We need to, this is the time, saints. We need to pray. We need to pray. We need to be endued with the power from upon high, the promise of the Holy Ghost. Listen, it's one thing to be saved and have God's Spirit live in you. All right? It's, it's another thing to be filled with the Spirit. It's, a whole, it's another thing, saints. All right? And so we, we need to seek the Lord for this. We need to seek the Lord for His for His power. We cannot do this in His strength. That's why the church is a mess. That's why you don't see the miracles. You don't see the gifts like we're supposed to see them and everything. Everything is upside down. And it's time now to trust Jesus and to start praying. This is what we need to do, pastors. We need to start praying for the power for all upon high. And you're going to see how God's going to turn this world upside down again. Saints, I love you. God bless you. Till next time.